The young girl Jessica worked as a waitress in a roadside cafe, dealing with stacks of order slips, mountains of dishes, and perpetually dirty floors. After graduating from university, she couldn't find a job in her field, but she still loved what she did, despite all the challenges. Every day, she served hundreds of customers passing by on the highway, and they left her good tips. And when there were very few customers or the cafe was about to close, Jessica leaned on the bar counter, looked out the window at the patch of sky visible, and dreamed of someday buying a small apartment, possibly opening her own cafe, or going to work in her field. It had been pouring rain for three days already. Like any person, she just wanted a good life and not to need anything. One evening, there were fewer cafe customers than usual. Jessica leisurely served a couple of tables and occasionally glanced at the clock. Another hour and her shift would be over. Suddenly, the bell above the entrance door tinkled softly, and a tall, handsome man entered the cafe in an expensive but thoroughly soaked suit. Jessica glanced at him with surprise from the opposite end of the room. Usually, men like him didn't come to their roadside cafe, they belonged more in fancy restaurants serving lobster for dinner. The man walked to the nearest table, took off his jacket, and neatly hung it on the back of the chair. Adjusting her white apron, Jessica tucked a strand of hair that had fallen out behind her ear and approached the customer. Good evening. What will you be ordering? The man raised his blue eyes to her, and she felt a surge of weakness in her body. Hello. Please bring me some coffee. Is that all? Yes, unless you have something else to offer. Jessica pondered, going through options in her head that might appeal to someone from his circle. Try some pancakes or vegetable omelet. Let's go with the omelet. I'm quite hungry after all, the man said, smiling. Excellent, the girl smiled back feeling embarrassed as she carefully wrote down each letter of the order in her notepad. Excuse me, what's your name? Jessica. And I'm Mark. Very nice to meet you. Likewise, Jessica nodded. She stood next to him as if rooted to the spot, part of her urging her to leave, while another part was charmed to the core by those blue eyes and radiant smile. Could I have another napkin, please? Yes, of course. Sehan Bissabad. Finally, Jessica managed to move. Handing the order to the kitchen, she went to the storeroom for a napkin. Here, take it. Thank you very much, Jessica. What brought you to our cafe, Jessica asked. And why does my presence here surprise you, Mark asked. Well, usually such well-built men speed up to get past this place as quickly as possible. Of course, she was exaggerating. You know, I just had an important meeting and was on my way home when my car broke down nearby, and fate brought me here. So you believe in fate? Mark rubbed his stubbled chin with his finger and glanced away. Apparently, he was carefully choosing his words before responding to the question. Partly, but I believe fate led me here, he finally replied. The man looked expressively at the girl, and at that moment their gazes met, and both felt a weak electric shock, as if sparks had passed between them in the air. Jessica liked Mark, and he liked her too. The girl brought his order, serving him attentively and efficiently. She liked his words about fate, and deep down she wanted to believe that by saying fate led me here he meant her. Jessica's shift came to an end. Shortly before that, Mark called a taxi and left for the hotel. He left her a generous tip, which initially left Jessica flustered. The man wished her a good evening, thanked her for the service, and disappeared as suddenly as he had appeared. The next day, Jessica's life seemed to return to its usual course. She went back to work, and outside the rain was pouring again. There were very few customers in the cafe, so between serving a few tables and mopping the floors, Jessica began to dust the corners of the room, she moved from cupboard to windowsill and back, simultaneously listening to the radio. Jessica, come here the other waitress, Roxy called. Take this and bring it to that far table. I need to call my mother. She wasn't feeling well today. 
okay, said Jessica. On the tray handed to her by Roxy, Jessica carried coffee and vegetable omelette. Looking at such a set, she involuntarily remembered Mark, yesterday's visitor. Your order, she addressed the man at the far table. He was sitting with his back to her, looking out the window. When he turned around, he smiled broadly. It was Mark. Hello, Jessica. And what's with the weather again? How Mark spoke cheerfully. Taken aback, Jessica tried not to show it. She smiled back at him and placed the coffee and omelet in front of him. Hello? How's your car? Did they fix it? Not yet, just sent it for repairs recently, so I'm still using my dad's car, Mark replied. The girl nodded, unsure of what else to add to the conversation. She felt awkward being around him and thus tried to leave quickly. I still have a lot of work to do, so if you need anything. Mark turned around and scrutinized the empty hall. And what will you do if there's hardly anyone here? Well, keep the place clean, but it's already spotless. Mark was clearly teasing Jessica, and she didn't appreciate the game. It all reminded her of kindergarten. Trust me, I'll find something to do. She turned to leave, but Mark managed to grab her hand and stop her. Jessica turned sharply. Her gaze froze on his hand. I'm sorry. Mark obediently withdrew his hand. Why would such a beautiful girl like you work in a place like this? There was no hint of embarrassment in the man's words. While Jessica felt as if she were being boiled alive, she was completely flustered and agitated, not knowing what to say. Well, life is full of surprises, she said. For example, for example, a person might graduate from university and not find a job in their field. The man nodded, understanding that she was referring to herself. A typical problem of modern times. Exactly. And so you ended up here. Yes, my dad used to bring me and my mom here often, but then he left us, and I haven't seen him since. I'm sorry, Mark said. Please, have a seat. Jessica sat down opposite Mark without hesitation. She hadn't shared the story of her difficult life with anyone in a long time, and this man had a way of putting others at ease and encouraging them to open up. Don't you feel sad coming here, he asked. No, on the contrary, I sometimes enjoy reminiscing about those times. I've been working here for three years now. Really? Yes, she smiled. And now you live with your mother. The smile faded from Jessica's face instantly. She looked down at the table and folded her hands on her knees, remembering her mother was particularly painful for her. No, she passed away two years ago. Mark felt extremely awkward for his excessive curiosity. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. It's okay. They fell silent for a moment. Both sat at the table, gazing out of the window, where the rain was pouring down heavily. It seemed like it wouldn't stop any time soon. Jessica thought about her parents and wondered how her life would have turned out if things had been different. You know, you really intrigued me, Mark continued. His blue eyes were fixed directly on her. And I would like to offer you something, just promise not to laugh, okay? All right, so what is this offer? The girl asked, doubtful. Mark's words seemed very strange to her, considering they had only met for the second time in her life. The thing is, my parents, against my will, have found me a wealthy bride, but the problem is, I don't want to get married. I haven't found the right one yet. Jessica frowned. His story sounded like something out of a bygone era, completely out of sync with modern times. My father is very ill and wants to play with his grandchild while he can. Do you understand? I want to offer you a fake marriage and a decent sum for you to marry me and bear me an heir. Jessica stared at Mark for a long time, trying to understand if he was joking or not. His face was serious, but his story and proposal seemed genuinely ridiculous to her. Asking her to be a mother to his child? 
do you take me for a fool? She asked. No, of course not. Understand, this is serious. If I tell my parents that I have a fiancé from outside our circle, they won't accept her. But if my fiancé is expecting my child, they'll come to terms with my choice. The marriage will be just on paper. Three years after the child is born, we'll divorce, and you'll get money and a two-bedroom apartment. The child will never want for anything. They'll have the best nannies, schools, and education. So what do you say? No, it's nonsense. Think about it. It's a significant sum of money. You clearly need it. I'll give you a week to think. Here's my number. Mark took out a pen from his breast pocket and wrote his number on a napkin. Call me next Tuesday and you'll announce your decision. After these words, the man left money on the table for breakfast and walked out into the pouring rain. For the past few days, Jessica had been deep in thought. She didn't even love this man and had never seen him before. Yes, he was handsome, but that meant nothing. He was offering her to become the mother of his child for a huge sum of money. She had spent her whole life trying to make ends meet, and here fate was literally throwing such an opportunity at her. A week later, Mark appeared again at the roadside cafe. So, what do you say, Jessica, he asked the startled girl. She still wasn't sure if she made the right decision, but there was no turning back. I agree. Mark beamed with a satisfied smile and nodded. Then come with me. Holding the girl by the waist, he led her out of the cafe and to his car. Jessica never appeared at the roadside cafe again, to which she had dedicated three years of her life. A month later, Jessica held a positive pregnancy test in her hands. She looked at the result with horror, realizing that there was no turning back now. For the next eight months, the girl lived in an apartment that Mark had rented for her. He took care of her, bought groceries, vitamins, clothes, came twice a week to spend time with her, and easily left money for any of her needs. Don't deny yourself anything, he said, touching Jessica's growing belly. Gradually, Jessica got used to this life and at times she even started to like it, especially the apartment where she now lived spacious, bright, and cozy, almost like her dream apartment. She carried the child in her womb and didn't think about its future, as everything had already been decided in advance, until the time when Mark disappeared. He hadn't shown up for over a week. During this time, he hadn't called or written once, but then Jessica decided that he was just very busy at work and decided not to worry about trivial matters, as it was harmful for the child. However, when two weeks passed without Mark's appearance, Jessica became very worried. Dialing his number again and again, she heard only the operator's voice the subscriber's phone is turned off or out of the coverage area. Damn him, Jessica cursed to herself every time, but there was nothing she could do except wait. On the second week of Mark's absence, Jessica brewed herself a cup of herbal tea and sat down on the couch to watch TV. She flicked through channels for a long time and, finding nothing interesting, stopped at the local news. You always have to keep an eye on what's happening around her mother, used to say. Two days ago, a private plane crashed. Six people died, including the son of the owner of the largest construction company, Skyline, Mark Miller, the correspondent said, standing against the backdrop of the plane wreckage. The reasons for the crash have not yet been determined. A photo of Mark appeared on the screen. Jessica dropped the cup from her hands in shock and spilled boiling water on her leg, but she didn't feel the pain. She was engulfed in genuine shock. Mark had crashed, and he was also the son of Hunter Miller, one of the most influential people in the city. Jessica's head was spinning, but she continued to stare at the photo of the man on the screen until it disappeared. Time seemed to stretch to infinity, and everything that was happening felt like a bad dream. Jessica began to cry. Even though she couldn't love Mark, he had always been kind to her, and now it's unclear what will happen to the baby when he is born. And it will be a boy, just as Mark wanted. Jessica started having contractions from nervous tension. She suddenly screamed in pain, Clutching the couch, her hand immediately reached for the phone, and she called an ambulance. The ambulance arrived as quickly as it could, and soon, 
After long hours of agony and desperate efforts, Jessica gave birth to a son, whom she named Mark. The time Jessica spent in the maternity ward seemed hazy and distant. She silently remembered and certainly did not contemplate. A nervous breakdown still made itself felt. Now that Mark is gone, she doesn't know what to do. The money Mark left last time won't last a week. There can be no talk of the promised amount. Yes, the apartment rent is paid for two years, but what will happen to them when those two years expire? She will have to return to the cafe and now carry the burden of a child as well. Out of despair, she couldn't fall asleep and often cried from helplessness at night. For the first time ever, Jessica began to blame herself for agreeing to such an adventure, which really isn't worth any money. A week later, Jessica and the baby were discharged home. Returning to the apartment, Jessica sighed heavily and put the baby in the crib. It's a good thing Mark had prepared everything in advance, a month before the birth, even though Jessica insisted on arranging everything later. Mark J.R. was surprisingly quiet, calm baby. He rarely cried and most of the time just lay, continuously examining objects around him. He was not much like his father. Rather, Mark managed to inherit most of the traits from his mother and her relatives. Although his eyes were still blue, just like his father's. After putting her son to sleep, Jessica started unpacking things from the maternity ward, then she slowly moved on to cleaning the house. Usually only cleaning distracted her from bad thoughts. This habit came to Jessica since her mother died. Then she spent whole days cleaning the apartment to not think about anything at all. She was too tired of suffering. The doorbell rang. Jessica didn't rush to open it because apart from Mark no one could know she was here, unless someone simply mistook the apartment. Jessica glanced through the peephole. There was a sturdy man standing outside, but what amazed her was extraordinary. This man looked like an exact copy of Mark. The girl's eyes widened in surprise, her heart pounded forcefully in her ribs. With trembling hands, she hurried to open the door to him, and all thoughts jumbled in her head. She didn't understand anything, completely confused. Opening the door, Jessica covered her mouth at the sight of the man, and then unexpectedly fainted. At first, the picture in front of the girl's eyes was blurry. Objects didn't want to hold their shape. Then, when she tried to open her eyes again, everything was fine. Her temples hurt. Apparently, she hit something. Thank God you've come to your senses. Someone breathed a sigh of relief, and the girl turned her head at the sound. Nearby, on the other end of the couch, sat a man resembling Mark. There, in the peephole, it seemed that he was Mark, but now she begins to see the differences. He doesn't have blue eyes at all, but brown ones. Seeing the stranger holding her son, Jessica abruptly got up and immediately took the child from the stranger's hands. Who are you? I thought you. I thought I saw. It seems you mistook me for Mark. Jessica nodded weakly. My name is Adrian. I'm his biological brother. He never told me he had a brother, the girl said doubtfully, rocking her son. Let's be honest, he might not have told you much, but I know everything about you. Mark often confided in me about his plans. Please don't ask me unnecessary questions. I came here because you can't be here alone, especially with a child. Most likely you're short on money, and you probably need help as a young mother, so I'll ask you to come with me. Adrian looked closely at Jessica, trying to gauge her reaction, but she just stared off into the corner. Our father passed away two days after hearing about Mark's death. His heart couldn't take it, you see. Mother is also on the edge, so the only ray of light in this whole story is her grandson and future heir. Jessica didn't want to dwell on the offer or puzzle over it for too long. She was already tired of everything that was happening, Besides, why would anyone else, if not relatives, come to pick up the woman and child of a deceased businessman? Without much thought, Jessica agreed. The next day, Adrian brought her and Mark to a huge mansion with a beautiful courtyard. They had been driving from the city for almost an hour, and now this private sector seemed like a different world to her. Surrounding them were forests, seas of green grass, and the house organically blended into the landscape. As soon as the car pulled up to the driveway, Adrian opened the door for the young mother and child. 
It's very beautiful here, Jessica remarked aloud. I like it here too, Adrian agreed. While the man and woman retrieved some items from the car, a woman in her sixties approached them. She smiled radiantly, with tiny wrinkles forming at the corners of her eyes. Welcome, you're so lovely. Jessica, right? Thank you. Yes, that's correct, the girl replied awkwardly. She briefly thought that this woman must be Adrian and Mark's mother. I am Patricia Miller. Pleased to meet you, Jessica said, feeling embarrassed. The woman approached a small stroller where Mark was quietly dozing. She clasped her hands in a prayer-like gesture and tenderly looked at the child. He looked so much like his father did when he was a child. I named him Mark, Jessica added quietly, then averted her gaze, feeling embarrassed. Now it seemed to her that the idea for the name was bad and completely inappropriate, but tears welled up in Mrs. Miller's eyes. She wiped the corners of her eyes with a handkerchief and nodded. He would have liked it. Well, let's not dwell on sadness, shall we? Let's go inside, I'll show you your room. Adrian, will you grab the bags? Of course, Mom. You too, poor Mom. Jessica and Mark's room was large and spacious, decorated in an exquisite Romanesque style. Upon entering, the girl suddenly felt like she was in a fairy tale or even a real princess. Patricia warned that dinner would be in an hour and left them to settle in with the baby. Adrian and Mark's mother turned out to be a very pleasant woman. Jessica didn't feel uncomfortable or endangered around her. She reminded her of her own mother in some way, which probably helped. Dinner went splendidly. The table was set with a variety of dishes to suit any taste. The cutlery and dishes gleamed with luxury, as if they were in an expensive restaurant. Please, sit down, Patricia invited Jessica and Adrian. Thank you for taking us and Mark in, Jessica thanked. Jessica, please. Now we need to stick together especially tightly. Honestly, when my younger son told us about you and the child, my husband and I were shocked. Mark didn't like to share his life, but we didn't expect this from him. At first it all seemed strange to us. We didn't even talk to him for a while, but eventually we got used to it. Grandchildren, it's always good. My husband always wanted to spend time with kids, but as you understand, he didn't have time. Mrs. Miller looked sincerely at Jessica, who was very embarrassed and couldn't start eating. Mark promised us a meeting that unfortunately didn't happen, with his participation. Listen, Jessica, I'll ask you and your son to stay here for at least a week. Let me get to know my grandson and you better. Jessica sat silently opposite Mark's mother. She lowered her head, and words of condolences came to her mind spasmodically. She felt sorry for Patricia and Adrian. First Mark died, then his father. Of course, now Adrian and Patricia were left alone with each other and surely needed support. However, so did she. Of course we'd be happy to stay with you. Great, come on, dear, eat. You're a mother, you need strength. Jessica forced a smile and started eating. At first, being in this house, she felt lost, but when everyone started talking, Jessica suddenly felt quite comfortable and momentarily carefree, so a whole month passed, instead of the promised week. For the first time in a long while, Jessica felt happy. She no longer needed to run anywhere, rush, worry about trifles. She finally had at least a semblance of a family, for which she was extremely grateful to Patricia and Adrian, who had become close to her. She felt as if she were living in a fairy tale, beyond which lay a dense, impenetrable forest, and therefore she had no desire to leave. Mark grew up spending all his time either with his uncle or his grandmother. He was also happy because now he was surrounded by endless love and care of the family. Evening was approaching the town. The sun, a huge orange, rolled down behind the horizon, spilling its juice into the sky and clouds. Birdsong gave way to the concert of crickets, the heat to a light coolness. Jessica sat on the swing in the garden and didn't think about anything, she just looked at the surrounding things and quietly admired them. Now the moment itself was important to her, not the future with grand plans like her own apartment or cafe. 
It's nice here, isn't it? Adrian approached the girl unnoticed, but she wasn't frightened at all. Even too nice. He sat down next to her, and now both of them were enjoying the beautiful views of the sunset. Lately, Adrian had a lot of questions that he wanted to ask her. She was kind, attentive, sensitive. Sometimes they went to the nearest forest together, or took Mark with them. They enjoyed each other's company, and both of them didn't hide it. In short, in short, in just a month, Adrian managed to fall in love with Jessica. But he still had questions, and he intended to ask her. Listen, Jessica, he began, gathering his courage. I have a few questions. I want you to honestly answer them, okay? Okay, the girl nodded. Did you really love my brother? Jessica sighed deeply. She had been waiting for someone to ask her that question someday, but she never came up with an answer. It was more of a passing infatuation, you know? We got involved, and then Mark was born. Hardly something you could call love. Of course she had to lie. She had promised Mark once that she would keep him secret in her plans and nobody would know about him, not even family. Adrian smiled. He suspected there was no love between them, but who knows, everyone loves differently. Why are you even asking? To make sure I'm not saying something foolish, Adrian smirked, and Jessica gave him a questioning look. Well, it seems I've fallen for you during the time we've known each other, you know. I liked you from the first meeting. I tried to push those thoughts away as far as possible, because you were with my brother. Jessica smiled and covered Adrian's hand with hers. She lightly squeezed it and nodded. Truth be told, I find you attractive too. It's always easy and fun with you, and you know maybe something could have worked out between us. Do you think so? Adrian smiled, not hiding his genuine joy. Yes, if you want it, just like I do. The man leaned in and kissed her. Jessica really fell in love with Adrian. Although they resembled each other too much externally with the brothers, in character and temperament, they were completely different, and Adrian turned out to be the closest to her. I promised to raise little Mark as my own son and turn him into a good, decent man. Maybe we should get married right away then, Jessica smiled, but Adrian didn't take it as a joke at all. Such thoughts had also long been in his head. Easy, he replied. Overwhelmed, Jessica stared into Adrian's brown eyes. Yes, she was happy with him. Surely they would have a happy life together, and besides, her son needed a father. I agree, she whispered tearfully. The joyful girl hugged the man tightly around the neck and cried. Finally, she was truly happy. Six months later, the wedding took place. There were few guests, only the closest ones, but it was enough to feel the uniqueness of the day for the newlyweds, standing in the wedding hall in a beautiful white dress with a hairstyle, a small bouquet in her hands, Jessica felt peace. She was constantly smiling and couldn't believe her own happiness, just like Adrian. Looking at her husband, Jessica suddenly caught herself thinking that she was not marrying a copy of Mark, as she had no feelings for him, but a person whom she loved madly, and from this she felt elated and let her plan with Mark remain a secret forever, because this chapter is closed, and now a completely new one begins. If you liked the story, please support me with the thumbs up button. It's just one click for you, but it's very important for me. Thank you.